Saint-Fenion Blonde. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Yet another one from Saint Fernion today, and this is their Blonde. Now, I tried their triple the other day, and that's reputed to be one of the best triples in the world. I thought it was okay. It wasn't a bad triple. This is the Blonde. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, I tried this before. The other night, I was having a Zoom meeting with a mate, and uh, I cracked one of these open, never had it before. I'd had a few, before I tried this, so I didn't really have my tasting head on, if you know what I mean, but I do remember it being very nice indeed. This brewery, I really like. I like what they do. The Christmas beer that they do is fantastic, and I'll definitely be getting it again next year, or this year, December, and it's, it's one of the better ones, I think, and it, it really did impress me. It made my top 10 list of Belgian beers for the year. You can view that down in the links below. Tried the triple yesterday, as I say. Now, this is the blonde. I've got the brune in the fridge. I've also tried that before, and that was quite nice as well. But today, it's the blonde. Now, the blonde has only been going since 1950, and the brune and the blonde were the first modern beers that they produced. The brewery's been going since 1873, but this blonde and the recipe for this blonde and the brune has only been around since 1950. And I think the Christmas beer is even later. I think that came out in the 90s. But they're a family run brewery and they're independent and they do a range of beers. Now, I know that Marks and Spencers, or I've been told that Marks and Spencers do some of their beer. So if you see some of this stuff, the Saint Fignon, you're out and about in Marks and Spencers, a little bit posh for me, Marks and Spencers. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm more of a an Aldi and a little fellow, and occasionally Morrison's when I'm a bit flush. But uh, if you see these in um, Marks and Spencers, then definitely pick them up because they are pretty good. The Blonde, I think, is one of the ones that they do. So if you watch this review and it turns out well, you'll know where to get it. I got this online. I think I got it from, was it Beer Sniffers? Yeah, I think it was Beer Sniffers. It was over three pound a bowl. I don't mind paying for decent Belgian beer. So. Let's see if this is a decent Belgian beer. Right, 7.5%, 330 ml bottle. I don't think it's got a brew sheet on the website. I couldn't see one, so I can't really tell you what ingredients there are. Uh, it just says it contains malt. It's all in French, of course, this lot. They're from the Walloon part of Belgium, uh, La Rue to be exact and nothing on this is in English. So yeah, it's top fermenting ale, has been brewed by the, f yeah, the family brewery since 1873, respecting traditions. This beer hasn't been though, this has been going since 1950 apparently. It's won a couple of, all of awards, World Beer Awards, and there's another award there, I can't see what that is, but it's a, blonde, a bronze award, a blonde award, <laughs> twat. So yeah, it looks pretty promising. Let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Now they've called this an Abbey Blonde, and Abbey Blonde, I really don't know what the difference is between an Abbey Blonde and a normal Blonde. But taste-wise I'm talking about, I know there's, you know, it's all to do with the heritage and stuff like that, but taste-wise I don't think there is. It's all, all down to the recipes. Right, I'm gonna get this into the glass before it fizzes up completely. And I'm gonna do my utmost to try and get it all in the glass because it really does taste different if you don't get the the yeasty sediment in there. Very lively beer, as is common with these top fermenting Belgian blonde beers. They will throw a load of candy sugar in there. Wow, that really, that really does smell strong. 
it's like malt. There's clove and spice in there. There's a soundness. Oh look, and here comes the sweetness. Yeah, that candy sugar comes through on that. Uh, there's a little dreg in the bottom of that. That's what it looks like. Very, very lively indeed. That's a two and a half finger white foamy head. Oh, there's lots of spice on this now. It really is. That is pungent. There's coriander, there's clove, and there's white pepper. But there's a nice sweet banana aroma coming from that too. But the clove and the banana really do mix. And it gives it what some people call a medicinal smell or a band-aid. Some people call it band-aid. If you it's quite funny, I tried this the other day. If you sniff a band-aid, I know it sounds fucking weird, but I can see where they're coming from with that band-aid smell. It does have like a a medicinal smell to it. And of course that comes from the the yeasty clove esters. And there it is, all in ye oldie glass. Look at that head, it is fucking huge. It's a head like Birkenhead. Very nice indeed. Now I put some beer, I think it was the triple I put into a leffer glass, which is nucleated, which means it will create, well, I don't know why they do this, but they they put it in, they put the little notch in the bottom of the glass, which creates loads and loads of carbonation. This glass hasn't, so I'm using this. If, if I'd used the other one, I would never have got the whole bottle in one hit. So there we are, looks very nice. Let's see what it tastes like. Bottoms up. And that's really nice. Oh, ethanol, blimey. Yeah. Lots of alcohol warming. Lots of ethanol on that, but there is a ton of other flavors to go with that as well. Let me dive in again. I'll just try and pick this apart. This is quite sweet. There's a fair amount of candy sugar in that that I'm, I'm getting. Nice coriander notes. Big clove on this. There is banana, but it's more about the clove on this one. And there's the white pepper as well, which is quite subtle. But I have to say, this is quite nice. As blondes go, this really is a good one. Now it's 7.5%, so you've got to give this a little bit of respect. And you know, I've tasted triples with the same ABV and there's not much difference in the taste between some triples and this. So I know I always make this point, but blondes of this ABV and triples, rarely do I find much difference. Sometimes I find triples are slightly more, more bitter. And I think that must be coming from the ethanol. But when you have two beers of the same ABV that are called different styles, but in a blindfold test, I don't think you're going to get much of a difference. Unless of course the yeast strains are markedly different. But this is nice for a 7.5% beer. That is supremely drinkable. <clears throat> Full of flavour as well. There's a nice bitterness on the arse end of it now that I can get. I think that's coming from hops and that's Typical of certain Belgian blondes where they'll put that in the them hops in the boil quite early and they really do rinse them hops of all the alpha acids that are in there and it gives it a nice bitterness on the finish, which is counteracted by the candy sugar that's in there, of course, and it does make it quite balanced. But yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, really good. I'm really impressed with that. Yet another winner from saint Fernion. <music> so 
So what is the verdict on Sanfignon Blonde? Yeah, it's really nice. I do like this. It's a 7.5% beer, so this is not for sessioning, as if I need to tell you that. But it's one of them beers that, and I'm gonna make this point again, yes, I know I'm not a broken record, but when you get triples of the same ABV and blondes, I've sometimes I do struggle to tell the difference. Now, of course, the whole categorization of blondes. Blondes are normally called singles, and it, it is graded by the ABV. Usually doubles are dark. I don't know why that is, but you have, you know, the 6.5% and up doubles. The triples normally 7 to 7.5%. And the blondes are usually lower. I've had blondes that have been 4.5%, and now I'm drinking one that's 7%. So this whole categorization that's come into play with Belgian beer, I, I really can't work it out. There's no rhyme or reason to it. it it's, like, it's like IPAs, you just call it what you want. Yeah, they can call this a blonde and they've got their own triple as well. I think the triple may be 7%. So yeah, what do I know when it comes to this? If someone can enlighten me on that, I thought it was all down to the strength, the ABV, and all the research I've done points in that direction saying that it's, you know, they're categorized by the ABV, the blondes, the doubles and the triples and the quadruples as well. Oh, that's a point, I've got a Centurion quadruple as well. I'll be reviewing that soon too. Uh, let's talk about this beer. This is a really good Belgian blonde. Now, you can pick up Leffer anywhere. I shouldn't really compare, be comparing the two. What Leffer is a macro brewed beer with, in my opinion, cheap ingredients. It's a really poor imitation of a Belgian blonde. And then you get stuff like this, which is quality, in my opinion. Both are available in the UK. Obviously Leffer is more available than this stuff because it's brewed by ABM Bev, they've got better distribution, etc. But I'm quite happy to see this being distributed in Marks and Spencers because it's a good beer. Now, if you like Leffer, then this really will be a step up for you. It's a lot stronger, it's a lot more flavour intense than Leffer, but this is a good representation of what a Belgian blonde should be. And to be honest, it's a good representation of what Belgian beer should be, the quality of Belgian beer. German beer, yes, it's renowned for its drinkability. Belgian blonde, I think, in my opinion, it's renowned for its flavour, and it really is a flavour fest, this beer. I'm gonna give this, it's not the best blonde that I've tried. I mean, there are good blondes out there, but this is up there with the best of them. So I'm gonna give this a nine and a half. And I'm wondering where I should give it a 10 or not, but I have tasted better blondes. Now, I'm not gonna go into them here. The Castile Blonde obviously is a good one that I really did like, nice. I think it's a little bit more sweeter than this one. But for flavor, I don't think this can be beat. So. Yeah, I think not a solid nine and a half is really good. Oh, do you know what? No, fuck it. I'm trying to justify a nine and a half when it's just easier to give this a 10. This really is one of the best blondes I've tried. It really is fantastic. So that is a 10 out of 10 for me. And it's doing things that are making saint Fognon one of my favorite Belgian brewers. They just get things right. The Christmas beer you have to try, that is fantastic. I've got a Brune in the fridge and I've got a Quadruple in the fridge, which I'll be trying out soon, so keep an eye open for them. If I haven't done them already, I don't know what order this lot goes up in. But for me, that is a 10 out of 10 and it's one of the best blondes that I have tried. And remember, beer is working class champagne.